Hello all my crafty peeps, it's Cheyenne from ecdesignstudios.com. Right, we are going to be making this card today. It is part of our One Sheet Wonder Halloween Night Designer Series paper uh, series. I'm going to try to make this card short and sweet. Um, I don't think any of you really know, but I am a migraine sufferer and I am in the recovery stage of um, a migraine. So I'm just going to get this done as quickly as I can and I'm taking the opportunity to make a card that's it's pretty simple and easy and straightforward and I'm not overthinking it because my brain is still a little bit fried from everything. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, shout out to all the other migraine sufferers out there. It's been fun times this year, hasn't it? All right, so we're gonna need the Sweet Home stamp set. This is the stamp set that we are using mostly on this this project. In fact, you can pretty much get away with just using this one. All right, we're gonna use the spider web, the ghost, the bat, the banner, and the trick or treat from this one. Now, we've got some Jar of Haunt stuff too. This is optional. We're gonna use the little creepy Frightful Eyes. This is going to, going to make our own background paper here. I think this is a fantastic use for these little eyes because I had no idea what else to do with them. And then I saw you know, some other Stampin' Up! demonstrators using it this way. I'm like, that's brilliant. Sold. I'm going to do it. All right. Um, we're also uh, going to use this little spider. Again, these two, they're optional. If you don't have this stamp set, don't worry about it. You know, go with the Sweet Home stamp set. Get the whole bundle, because then you can make cute little houses. All right. We're going to be using Archival Basic Black, Craft White. I believe it's just Whisper White. Craft Whisper White and uh, Pumpkin Pie. You're going to need a little sponge. Um, Stamping Up sells these sponges. There's, they're big circles, and I, of course, I don't... Here we go. They come in circles like this. You can use them like this. You can wash them, you know, with uh, soap and water and to get ink out and like reuse them a few times. You can cut them up. I tend to just cut mine up. I believe they're only three fifty, maybe, and you get three of these size sponges. It's a good deal. Go for it. And I just use a binder clip on the end of it, and that works for me. All right. Your snail adhesive, some dimensionals. If you happen to have a Stampin' Right uh, basic black marker, go ahead and grab that. Various stamp blocks. Here we have a Whisper White A2 top fold card. Pretty standard. Going to need a four by five and a quarter piece of pumpkin pie cardstock. You can get the Pumpkin Pie in Basic Gray in the 12 by 12 sheets in the Holiday Catalog. I um, believe that's only going to be for the Holiday Catalog. And you get them in a, a set with both of them. And then you're going to need some Basic Black 1 by 3 quarter, 1 and 3 quarter by 1 and 3 quarter squares. These are going to be your mats. And then from our Halloween Night Designer Series paper, you're going to need four one and a half by one and a half inch squares and you're going to need four of the uh, the mats too so while we got these let's go ahead and start on these so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop these right onto the mats so I'm going to do two pieces of one side up and the other two pieces of the other side up. So with this one, you know, two pieces are going to be with the orange and white stripe up and the other two are going to be with the dots facing up. Now, again, it's wonderful working with double-sided paper, especially with these one sheet wonder cards because you you kind of double the the options instead of having two sheets of paper that you're working with, it's still only the one sheet wonder paper. All right, so we've got those. I'm gonna go ahead and set those aside. Let's work on our uh, four by five and a quarter piece of 
pumpkin pie cardstock. We're going to take our pumpkin pie ink pad. We're going to get some on our sponge. I'm working on a silicone mat. Um, I highly recommend doing this whenever you're going to be doing some ink blending on the corners. Silicone mat, a rubber mat, something where the ink's not actually going to absorb into it. You can work on like just a piece of paper, that's fine. I just think it's more effective to do it this way. So you're going to start on the silicone mat and then you're going to bring it in and blend it. Now this is something, it's going to take some practice. Um, another recommendation, like instead of just going, keeping it flat, kind of angle it up a little bit. That's going to give you a softer blend. And a lot of this, it's just, it's trial and error and it's practice. Get some, you know, scrap paper, try it on that. You know, if you have like the, the cheaper copy paper in your printer, because I do, because there are certain things that you print out that you just do not need on quality paper. So you're just going to ink up the edges, and this is such a subtle difference, but it does make a difference. It definitely elevates your craft to that next level. So you see it just gives like a nice little halo. You could continue all the way across if you wanted to, or just like take and ink up the sides like direct to paper. Um, Using the sponge, it does give a softer look, but you can see, like, there, there's the paper without any inking. And there it is with. So, just a quick and easy way just to give a little extra dimension to your cards and crafts. Alright, let's get off some of this stuff. Alright, let's see. Now, let's uh, stamp on the little scary eyes. So we're going to need that pumpkin pie ink pad back. So pumpkin pie cardstock, pumpkin pie ink pad, and you end up with just this tone on tone look. Wonderful thing about stamping up is all the colors across the board are the same. So pumpkin pie stamp and write is going to be the same as pumpkin pie stamp pad and cardstock and ribbon and all of that. So it is very easy to coordinate everything. Oh, and you can do this with a pattern or not. I do have a video on making your own designer series. Paper, your background papers. Feel free to to look back at that. I mean there's, there's no right or wrong way. There's tips and suggestions like stamping off the edge of the paper um, but other than that, it's it's however you want. If you want this to be super symmetrical, go for it. Well, if you're you're really a perfectionist, go ahead, draw a grid on it and go for that. I tend to enjoy more of an instant gratification type of effect, so I tend to just go for it and eyeball it. And uh, Math and I, we don't get along very well, so I try not to to measure things as much as possible because chances are it's just going to get frustrating for me. So, Alright, that's it of the pumpkin pie ink pad for now. And there we have our little creepy eye background paper. This reminds me a lot of the wallpaper at the Haunted Mansion. And Disney, it all comes back to Disney. Alright, let's start gathering up our little squares. Alright, so we are going to take our bat, our bat. I did not actually get the bat out. Oh no, let's get the bat. I cannot do this project without a bat. Alright, with our archival um, basic black <coughs> and a little bat from the Sweet Home stamp set. I'm going to ink that up, get it pretty good and solid. We're just going to pop that on one of the spotted um, squares so and that's all there is to that square that one is done and then we can put the bat away uh, now let's uh, actually do our spider web now I am a child of the 90s so anytime I you know 
say spider web or think spider web, it, it always brings me back to no doubt. Um, Tragic Kingdom, like that was the first CD that I ever owned and it was given to me by one of my best friends at the time and thank you know goodness for Facebook because we found each other years after high school and we uh, have caught up with each other so that's awesome well, alright just stamping that little spider web in the corner of one of the orange stripes that's all there is to that and now what is a spider web without a spider so this is the spider from uh, the Jar of Hans Again, using the basic black, we're just going to stamp it on. You don't have to do this if you don't have this stamp set or if you have another spider, you know, use that. And now, again, if you don't have the Stampin' Right marker, you can use, like, a regular black pen. And I'm just going to draw, like, a little, little web line from the spider to the spider web. Just that little extra bit of detail there. So, all right, that square is done now. Um, and let's see, we need this one, and we need the banner. All right, we're going to ink up the banner in basic black as well. And on the last um, polka dot one, we're just going to stamp that banner right on there. There we go. I'm actually going to... Uh, stamp it again it may or may not line up I'm kind of okay with it not lining up just to give that yeah see this wasn't lined up perfectly but it's made it a little bit thicker so it kind of stands out a little bit more against the polka dot background and it is Halloween I think I've said this in some other uh, videos but I mean, if Halloween isn't the time to uh, <laughs> color outside the lines. I'm not sure when is because it is it's Halloween. Things are creepy and distressed. All right. Let's get out our pumpkin pie ink pad and our trick or treat sentiment from the Sweet Home stamp set. Going to ink that up and we're going to stamp it on the banner. And there we have our trick or treat sentiment. Well, there we go. So that's three squares down. We've only got one more to go. Now this last one I'm going to uh, show you a little something that I've been working on. So I've been fascinated by the uh, Misty um, stamp positioner and you know I was wondering you know all right how effective is this but before I go springing the money on that let me you know do one of the DIY Misty things. So this is just a CD case with two pieces of fun foam for the photopolymer. Um, if you're using the rubber stamps and you only need one piece, a piece of grid paper and window sheet over top of it. Now I'm sure the Misty is much better made and I still have to try the Stampin' Up Stampamajig, I believe it is. Um, but this is what I had. This is what I had on hand now. So, and I figured, you know, let's let's give it a try. Let me see if I even, you know, like this sort of thing. So, um, we'll see. So, so far, like it's okay. But you know, this is definitely not a permanent solution by any means. So, I'll be trying out some of the other stamp positioners. All right, so we've got our last square. I've got the little ghost, and I'm going to close it up, pop it onto the other side. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because this is kind of a, a darker shade. You know, this is a deep color that we're going to be stamping on. We're going to be using the Whisper White Craft, but I want to be able to go over this again and again and again to really build up the pigment in the, the white, so this is where this is wonderful so that's what I'm going to do if you have a stamp positioner go ahead and use that if you've got an old CD case and some fun foam lying around then use that so let me uh, zoom you in here you can see so alright that is one stamp 
with the Whisper White. Pop it on. And we've got two. And three. And four. And I think this will be the last one. So five layers of the Whisper White. You could also heat emboss this, but again, you know, I'm, uh, I'm recovering from the migraine and, uh, yeah, my energy levels are just not really, uh, not really, uh, what they usually are. It's, it's just not happening today, but I needed to get into my craft room because everyone knows that creativity cures and heals what ails you and it heals the soul and all that jazz. You know, some people have music, I have my art. So, all right, there is our little Casper. All right, let's put all of this aside. Widen the shot, and all right, let's put our card together. So we've got our card base, and let's go ahead and get our background paper and go ahead and adhere that on. I find it's easier to get all the flat pieces adhered first instead of putting the dimension onto pieces and then trying to get them to lay flat through the dimension. So, all right, got that on. And now we're going to put two dimensionals on the back of each of our little stamped squares here. Now I'm a little surprised that I haven't reached for my big shot at all during this. I usually do. It's sitting there. It's lonely. I hear it asking like, hey, hey, why aren't you using me? What did I do? Did I make you mad? I'm sorry, can you use me again? It's like, it's okay. It's okay, Big Shot. We're good. It's all good. I still love you. Still love you. All right, so I'm going to put the bat right over here in the corner. And let's go with, here we got the spider web right next to it. And we've got our ghost. And this is pigment ink. So uh, when you're doing this at home, let the pigment ink dry a little bit because as you can see, Casper started to run away. All right, and now our little trick-or-treat sentiment. And there we go. We have our cards. If you wanted to, you could certainly add a ribbon or some baker's twine around here. And I was keeping it simple for y'all today, for me today too. So there we go. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please remember to like and subscribe. There will be a full list of the products I used with links to my online store on the coordinating blog post on my website. It'll be in the description bar below. Um, thank you again so much for watching. Happy crafting, happy creating, happy Halloween.